Hey guys, welcome back to another video essay. Today I'm going to be talking about dynamic range, bit depth and colour sampling. If you're a filmmaker, a colourist, an editor or even just a video enthusiast, these technical details are among the fundamental things you should know. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Dynamic range is the ratio between the darkest and brightest parts of an image. It is measured in stops. The ability of a camera to capture the brightest and darkest portions of an image without the loss of details in the highlights or the shadows depends on the size of its sensor, on the bit depth, and how many stops of dynamic range it is able to capture. The higher a camera's dynamic range, the more detail it is able to retain in the highlights and the shadows. For example, a Canon 5D Mark III only has about 11 stops of dynamic range, whereas a Red Weapon has about 16.5 stops when it is shooting in RAW. However, the human eye can see about 20 stops, which is why we're able to see so much more and in so much more detail than any camera can capture. Some cameras, generally cine cameras like a C100, are able to shoot in a log picture profile, which enables the camera to retain a little more detail in the highlights and the shadows. DSLRs, however, like my Canon 80D, tend to shoot in very contrasted, very saturated picture profiles. And this generally results in the shadows being crushed, i.e. completely lacking in detail, and the highlights being completely clipped, which means they're entirely blown out and unusable, basically. If you want to learn a little bit more about this topic, you should check out the video about why I shoot on a flat picture profile on my DSLR. Video cameras record footage in digital files, and these digital files are comprised of pieces of data known as bits. The color of each pixel in an image is determined by mixing together differing amounts of the three colors red, green, and blue. Bit depth, therefore, refers to the number of bits of data, i.e. ones and zeros, used to record the three different color channels, red, green, and blue, for each pixel. The vast majority of DSLRs record 8-bit video. 8-bit video contains 8 bits of data storage available for each color channel. This results in a variation of only 256 shades per channel. The resulting combination of the 256 shades of red, green, and blue means there are 16,777,000 216 possible colors for an image recorded in 8-bit. And that's not a lot of colors if you really think about it. 10-bit video is the other common format when one moves from a consumer or prosumer level to a professional level of videography. 10-bit video contains a possible 1,024 shade values per channel. Thus, a total of, and I'm going to read this from my laptop because it's a very long number, 1 billion 73 million 741 800 and ugh, 1 billion 700 mm, 1 billion 73 million 741 thousand 824 possible colors in a 10 bit image that's substantially more colors than an 8-bit video. 8-bit video is incredibly limited when it comes to the manipulation of color in post-production. It degrades so quickly compared to 10-bit video, which has so much more latitude for correcting crushed blacks or blown out highlights in over or underexposed video. Because 8-bit video simply just doesn't have enough information to be properly color graded, colorists working with it quickly encounter problems with color banding, which is when there are abrupt changes between shades of the same color due to the highly compressed color sampling that is present in 8-bit footage. So why do most DSLRs shoot in 8-bit if it's so crap? The fact of the matter is that unfortunately DSLRs tend to be photography cameras first and video cameras second. They do not have the capability to record anything greater than 8-bit video files internally because formats with a greater bit depth 
come in much larger file sizes as they contain significantly more information. However, if you hook a DSLR up to an external recorder, you can generally get something like a ProRes format out of it, which is in fact 10-bit. Now a little bit about color sampling. Digital video is stored as separate Luma, i.e. light, and chroma, i.e. color, components. This is so that the resolution of the chroma can be reduced with respect to the resolution of the Luma. And why would you do this? Well, it's in order to compress the amount of data that needs to be transmitted. This little process is known as color sampling. You might wonder how we don't notice this. Well, the fact is, is that the human eye cannot pick up as much color detail as it can light detail. And thus, we cannot always perceive the difference in compression. Different compressions are expressed as ratios, where the first number represents the luma and the others represent the chroma. For example, a 444 ratio ratio is completely uncompressed luma and chroma, while 422 is full resolution luma and half resolution horizontally on the chroma components. 422 is the standard color sampling for ProRes and also the standard for traditional broadcast. Canon DSLRs shoot with a 420 sample size, with full resolution luma and half resolution both vertically and horizontally for the chroma components. This high rate of compression is just another reason why 8-bit footage is an absolute nightmare to color grade. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. I know it was super technical, but if anything, I hope you walked away with the fact that we all need to get on that 10-bit life. Seriously, if you have any aspirations of color grading anything or fixing mistakes in post, 8-bit is not the way to go, unfortunately. But yeah, I guess that's it for this video. I'll be back with another one in about a week or two's time. Until next time, cheers.